John, you're here for the first time in Geneva, is that right? Yeah, this is our first visit. Why is it taking so long to bring a car here? There's been so many fantastic cars from Hennessy. Yeah, this is the first one. You know, I mean, our main business has been tuning, but now that we have our all new own car, we felt like Geneva was like the Super Bowl, the World Series of hypercars down the aisle. You've got Koenigsegg, Bugatti, Pagani. So we felt like it's really neat to have our car here amongst the other great automotive brands. And it is a new car, and that is the big difference. So why the move from taking an established chassis and platform and completely engineering something from the ground up? To be the fastest. Yeah, I mean, the Venom F5, it exists to be the fastest road car that we can build. Hopefully the fastest road car in the world. So 1,600 horsepower, 8-liter twin-turbo V8, super low coefficient of drag at 0.33 and it weighs under 3,000 pounds and our target goal is to go over 300 miles per hour. So this is a completely new engine from the ground up, Correct. eight liter, eight liter, twin turbo. Correct. And how quick is it going to go? How you think you're going you to know, break I that? think zero to 60, zero to, you know, zero to 100 quarter mile, those are all traction dependent and so you can have all the power you want but if you can't put it up. So we don't really know in that realm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a low two seconds, zero to 60, but with electric cars, I think low two seconds or to 60 is kind of becoming common with electrics. But where this car will really stretch its legs is when you get above 100 miles per hour. So we're projecting zero to 300 K, so 186 miles per hour in less than 10 seconds. Roughly the same time it takes for the current F1 car to go from a standing start to 300 K. Speed is obviously like the absolute headline of this car. Sure. How much is this car focused on that as its sole purpose? Well, look, are, cl are our clients going to go out and go 300 miles per hour? Probably not. But it's very important for our clients to have that bragging right. That's a part of the story of the car. It's a part of who we are as a company and part of our DNA of our family. Um, but at the same time, we want our car to be uh, you know, comfortable and road drivable and something that you could take your wife to dinner in and go to a play or go out on your favorite road and, and have at it. So uh, it's very much a real road car. It's not designed as some sort of a road missile to go out and run some big number. It'll go out and run the big number, but it's still something pleasant to drive, you know, when hmm. you're out. Well, when you want something special for, uh, for a weekend run. With the Venom GT, because it was based off an Elise, we kind of expected a fairly cramped sure. focus and on it speed. And it, this, you know, this is a roomier, this will be a roomier, more comfortable car. So again, I think we check all the right boxes in terms of looks, power, performance, power to weight ratio, and then ultimately being able, you know, being a fun, thrilling car to drive, but still easy to drive when you're just cruising around town. So you're saying that the the speed and the emphasis on speed has not led to compromise in an area where a car's actually gonna get used no, every day. No, if there's any compromise, the compromise will come. I mean, the car has to achieve the numbers. And that's basically what you see is the design. The only element in the car that had, that I said, hey, look, I would like a certain, I would like the headlight to be distinctive. Yeah. I said, the design team, everything else that you want to do from a design standpoint, as long as it has the least amount of drag, kept under 3,000 pounds, and has the best chance to break 300 miles an hour, that's what it needs to look like. So the design, apart from some touches like you mentioned, like the headlights, the design is completely focused on aero and achieving that Correct. speed. So this is a design that has been sculpted by the necessity of speed. Correct. The form follows the, the design, the desired performance of the car. Mm. Can you talk me through some of the aero that's on the car, anything that's significant? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think one interesting thing about the car is that the, from the splitter in the front and the nose to the diffuser in the rear, it has one seamless solid body panel. And that's an important part of moving, the, the air flowing underneath the car is almost as important as what's flowing over the top. Mm -hmm. So uh, another piece, the diffuser, the, the rear wing is dynamic, so it can go up and down depending on the, the, uh, the driving uh, conditions of the, that the driver's in. Um, the suspension has, is right height adjustable depending on what you're doing with the car. If you're going to go out and go high speed, it will lower down. So that drag coefficient can be adjusted based on the necessity. Correct, yeah. correct. If you put the wing up and you're in full ride height, it's not going to be fully capable. It will have on the steering wheel a special VMAX mode that you can dial in for that specific use. It lowers down, it lowers the rear wing, sets the suspension, the traction control, a certain spec and off you go. Mm. This isn't focused on track lap times, it's not a downforce car. No, this car. is not a downforce car, it's not designed to go to the Nürburgring and go a 620, but I do think, we do plan to test at the Nordschleife, and I do believe the car is capable of running something under seven minutes, so it'll still be a proper handling car, proper road course car, but it's not just, it's not like a Santa GTR or something like that, it's designed for lots of downforce. 
Here at Geneva, unlike maybe at SEMA, where it's very much about you know, the custom, which is the, the traditional side of Hennessy, this, uh, you said it yourself, you're in quite close proximity to those rivals. How do you think they're going to react to this bold statement, you know, breaking towards 300 miles an hour, from, from a, a much smaller manufacturing without a mass of a VW behind them to fund it? I don't know. I, I, would, I would hope that they would uh, take this seriously. We've, uh, we've gone out and done a few things before. We've said we would do it, and we did. So. Uh, that being said, I think that the, the, the serious players, they play their own game. They'll go do what they need to do to, to promote and develop their own cars. And if that's something that their clients are interested in, they may be competing for the same thing. And I think a lot of guys, uh, Christian, I think, plays it close to the vest and, and doesn't really say what he's going to do. And that, in some ways, I think that's a, a smart way of going. But we're very open and transparent, and we're mm. very open about what our intentions are. And uh, you talk what often we're going with, to do. with Christian. Yeah, you have a conversation we had a really going? nice conversation. We were just—I was walking with my wife a couple days ago, just checking out the show. We ran into Christian and Haldora, had a nice chat. He introduced us to uh, to the Remox, and uh, so it's uh, it, you look. We're competitive. We 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 all want to win and and uh, have our uh, special place within the automotive uh, world. But at the end of the day, we're still car guys. I think we. We share a lot of things in common and have a lot of respect for what those guys do, as well as the Bugatti and other other brands that are here. Mm -hmm. so. When you're trading on speed like this and, and kind of trading blows with these uh, with the, these huge manufacturers, how much does speed become the biggest selling point of what you're doing, and how much have you attached speed to the Hennessy name as its kind of biggest selling point? It's it's what we're known for. Um, you know, it takes more than just speed to sell cars, though. In this realm, I believe that. You know, we probably have more clients that have bought our car based on the elegant, powerful design. You know, they would probably say, okay, if it only goes 250, I still want the car. Mm -hmm. But it's important to us, it's important to me, it's important to our family, it's important to a lot of our clients. So, but I think that the, the look of the car is one of the biggest selling points. And I think being able to have a really cool story to back it up and having a small kind of you know, we're kind of the, uh, the, the the David going out and fighting the Goliaths or the Bugattis and others. Uh, I think that makes it interesting for, for all of us. So timeline-wise, we saw it first at SEMA. We're getting a few more details here. Sure. We're expecting to hear a bit more at Pebble this right. year. Yeah, we'll un we'll uh, we'll have a full presentation of our powertrain. So we'll show that at Pebble. Uh, we will begin testing our first prototype later this year, mm -hmm. and then uh, we will be delivering uh, cars to clients later in 2019. And somewhere, somewhere in 2019, we'll begin some high-speed testing and see where that goes. So that's that's when we can expect to see it actually out moving around that time. Correct. Um, so the. The drivetrain is still under development, it's still being processed, so you right. yourself probably don't know the full extent of what it might be able to achieve. Well, we know that it's already achieved over 1,600 horsepower, and we believe more is there. We don't feel like that we have a need to go any further with the powertrain, um, but that option always exists if we need to. With that kind of power going to the the wheels and the, the gearbox, have anything special having been done to those to make Sure, it? well, with the, the, the car will have a very sophisticated traction control system that actually functions off of GPS. So the computer in the car will know the, the speed of the car, you know, what the wheel speed's doing, and basically uh, the, the traction control system in the car will be functional up to probably 120 miles an hour. If you, if the customer had the ability to completely turn it off, you know, the car could spin the tires at 140. So Venom GT did that. So that's not the, the top speed was only really able to be achieved in the Venom GT by someone who really knew what they were doing. Well, no, I mean, the, the traction control kept the car, kept the, Basically, we, the, the F5 will not see full power to probably north of 140 miles per hour. Just can't put it to the ground. And has all this been, uh, has any of it come across from the, the Venom GT or has it all been developed from the ground up? No, I mean, it's all, the, the, we've, we've taken everything that we learned with the Venom GT, uh, it, from whether it's cooling, I mean, the, the Venom GT could drive in Dubai in the summertime you know, with a 1,244 horsepower motor and, and have cold air conditioning, not overheat. We wanted to take all the goodness of the Venom GT and still carry it over to the F5. And so cooling and thermal dynamics and things of that nature were an important part of uh, the new car. But that being said, um, the, uh, the performance that, uh, we knew what the Venom GT was capable of in terms of its performance, mm -hmm. and we've used that as a baseline for the F5. So does this mark a change for Hennessy in that 
the future might hold more cars developed from the ground up rather than uh, maybe in addition to uh, a modification scene, actually sure. building more cars under the Hennessy name? That's a great question. So our tuning business, Hennessy Performance, again, it's been around 27 years. When we began the process of developing and, and building the F5, we set up a new company. So Hennessy Special Vehicles, and its mission is to uh, design, develop, and build cars. The F5 is our first car. We do plan additional cars beyond the F5. And um, I had dinner with uh, uh, CEO of McLaren, Mike Fluitt, and his wife last night. And I would say that if uh, one of our goals, if we could become like an American version of McLaren, uh, it would be kind of a cool thing. So that's uh, that's where we're looking to go. We're this very... being our uh, the, the the equivalent of the F1. Yes. So, yeah. Well, if it, if it can hold up to that, that certainly broke a lot of records sure. in terms of speed. Yeah. And and 2030s on people still remember that right. car. So maybe 2030s so that's on. Our, that's our that's kind of our uh, our benchmark would be. In the that's a fairly that, that's a, a lofty that's a goal to go for. But if you're gonna if you're gonna aim high, you might as well go for the highest. No, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Thank yeah. you very much, John, Thanks for your time. time. Can't wait to see this All in right. action. We'll have to get you in the behind the wheel sometime. Oh soon. yeah, All yeah. Right. You better believe I'll be after that.